AMD's new GPU isn't just faster, it's cheaper per token, ships this quarter, and fits 128 in a rack. For the first time in years, AMD's AI roadmap isn't behind, it's aligned, and we're here to talk you through it. Now, the AI hardware market in 2025 is defined by two realities, explosive demand and limited supply. Nvidia still dominates in revenue and ecosystem control, but its lead is no longer uncontested. AMD, following the commercial success of its MI300 series, is expanding aggressively. At its Advancing AI event, AMD introduced its next wave of hardware and software designed to challenge Nvidia across performance, price, and platform scope. The centerpiece is a new MI355X accelerator, a GPU built to scale AI workloads with higher throughput, larger memory, and a tighter focus on low precision compute. The AMD strategy extends beyond the silicon, with a full stack roadmap through 2027, expanded Rockham support, and new rack scale offerings, AMD is positioning itself not just as an alternative, but as a credible primary supplier for hyperscale AI infrastructure. Now, if you want a more detailed look at the latest announcements today, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. There's a lot of detail to go through in a few videos upcoming, and you should be the first to get the latest updates when they drop. And let's start with that new GPU. AMD's new Instinct MI355X GPU marks a sharp escalation in the company's pursuit of AI market share. Built on the cDNA4 architecture and fabricated on TSMC's advanced N3P node, the MI355X doubles AI matrix throughput compared to the MI300X, primarily by scaling up tensor compute performance without increasing traditional vector width. Support for low precision data types like FP6 and FP4 along with optimized processing pipelines, enable significantly higher token throughput, particularly in large-scale inference workloads. AMD does this in part by beefing up FP4 support rather than simply padding FP6 to fit into FP8, like the competition. Now, the new AI accelerators are paired with 288 gigabytes of HBM3E across eight stacks, and the AMI355X offers eight terabytes per second of memory bandwidth. That's a 50% improvement over the MI300X. That scale enables both larger models and higher throughput at batch, with AMD targeting high-density deployments up to 128 GPUs per rack through liquid cooling. The result is over 180 kilowatts a rack of GPU power. Now, while absolute performance is the headline, AMD is positioning MI355X as a price performance disruptor. The company claims a 30% lower cost per token than NVIDIA's GB200, or up to 40% more tokens per dollar. These figures are workload dependent and not independently validated, but the message is clear. AMD is no longer competing just on architecture, but also on economics. Now, MI355X is already shipping to partners, with cloud and hardware deployments expected in Q325. Now, in terms of roadmap, AMD isn't just shipping new hardware. It's publishing a forward roadmap designed to assure hyperscalers, OEMs, and cloud providers that it can sustain competitive performance year over year. That roadmap now extends through 2027 with new GPU, CPU, and networking families planned annually. The centerpiece for 2026 is the MI400, AMD's next major AI accelerator, and its first to support Ultra Accelerator Link for true scale of compute across hundreds of thousands of GPUs. Now, the performance targets of MI400 are aggressive. It's expected to reach 20 petaflops of FP8, roughly four times the FP16 equivalent performance of the MI355X. Feeding that compute is 432 gigabytes of custom HBM4 across what appears to be 12 stacks, delivering 19.6 terabytes per second of bandwidth. That's not an incremental update. It's a generational leap in both capacity and throughput, aligning with where AI models and memory footprints are headed. Now, just as significant is AMD's commitment to scale up fabric. While MI300 and MI350 top out at eight GPU configurations, MI400 will integrate Ultra Accelerator Link, or UAL, an open interconnect designed to rival NVLink in scale and latency. UAL enables clusters of up to 1,024 GPUs in a single scale-up topology, closing a key gap in AMD's architecture portfolio and allowing it to pursue the largest, most memory-bound training workloads. Hardware isn't anything without software, and AMD's Rockham software stack has long been its weakest link in an AI adoption. However, at the event, the announcement of Rockham 7, that changes. This release marks a clear pivot from catching up to competing, not just on features, but on timing. 
Rockham 7 delivers full support for the new MI350 series and introduces long-awaited Day Zero compatibility for major frameworks like PyTorch and Onyx. For the first time, AMD is positioning Rockham as ready on launch day, not quarters later. Now, the performance gains from software are also material. AMD claims inference and training workloads on existing MI300X hardware are up to 3.8x faster under Rockham 7 versus Rockham 6. While that improvement is cumulative across the Rockham 6 series, it reflects aggressive optimization and short release cycles, an area where AMD has historically lagged. Strategically, AMD is also unlocking Rockham development on Windows. Native PyTorch support, Onyx runtime integration, and development compatibility with AMD's latest discrete and integrated GPUs will begin previewing in Q3. This broadens the addressable base of developers and allows Rockham more closely to align with existing enterprise AI workflows. Now on that enterprise side, Rockham Enterprise AI will introduce tools for large-scale deployment as provisioning, model tuning, and orchestration. It's not feature parity with NVIDIA's full-stack software yet, but it's no longer a bottleneck in AMD's platform. Rockham 7 for Enterprise AI shifts the conversation from if to when. Now beyond software, beyond simply the chips, there's the full stack solution AMD has sorely needed. And now it will offer a full stack AI rack and a roadmap to keep it current. With MI355X GPUs, Turin Epic 5th Gen CPUs, and a new Polara 400 AI network card, AMD has transitioned from component supplier to system platform vendor. Customers can now buy entire racks built entirely from AMD Silicon, designed for up to 128 liquid cooled GPUs per rack at that eye watering 180 kilowatts. Now, Polara is the strategic asset here. Developed by the Pensando team, that's the acquisition AMD made, and built on TSMC N4, it's AMD's first major AI focused networking part and the first AI network card publicly announced to support the Ultra Ethernet Consortium specification. That aligns AMD with open scale networking at a time when NVIDIA continues to double down on proprietary NV-Link based fabrics, as well as its scale out. For hyperscalers preferring standard Ethernet and vendor diversity, that alignment matters. But AMD's rack ambitions don't just stop with MI355X. In 2026, the company will launch Helios, a next generation rack platform built around the MI400 GPU. As covered earlier, MI400 introduces Ultra Accelerator Link and HBM4 bandwidth scaling. But Helios goes further, incorporating next generation compute and networking. The CPU is codenamed Venice, and we know that's based on Zen 6 and built on TSMC's N2 node. AMD and TSMC publicly showcased a Venice wafer just a few weeks before this launch, making it the first announced N2 silicon in active development. Launch for that CPU is expected in the first half of 2026. Now, the NIC is codenamed Volcano, but little is disclosed. It likely tarts 800 gig class throughput, keeping pace with expected data center Ethernet roadmaps and doubling what Polara offers today. Now, in terms of that Helios rack, another key shift here is form factor. This Helios render shown at the event suggests AMD is moving to a double width rack, something I've argued would become necessary as GPU density and cooling demands outgrow traditional 19 inch standards. Dual width designs have long been used in the emulation system from vendors like Siemens, but this may be the first time such a layout hits mainstream AI infrastructure. If Helio ships has shown, it would signal a redefinition of what a standard AI rack looks like in 2026 and beyond, designed in order to help scale up. Now, there's also a rack in this roadmap here for 2027, unnamed so far, but it features a future AMD CPU called Verano and a generation beyond for the Accelerator, the MI500 series. It looks dense, and there's no comment about total power consumption just yet, but AMD's message here is if you're buying by the rack, we can now meet you there and stay there. Now, what's important with this rack scale, as always, is efficiency. And AI performance is scaling fast, but so is power consumption. As a result, AMD knows it needs to address both. At the Advancing AI event this year, AMD committed to a new long-term target, a 20x improvement in rack scale energy efficiency by 2030. That's relative to today's MI300X based systems. And it's not meant to be just a PR number. It reflects a real constraint in the industry. If power costs and data center footprints continue to rise linearly with performance, AI deployment becomes economically unstable at scale. Now the path to 20X comes from both hardware and software. On the hardware side, AMD is already moving aggressively to denser memory, such as HBM4, lower precision compute, such as FP4 and FP6, and scale-up interconnects, such as Ultra Acceleration Link, all of which reduce data movement overhead and improve flops per watt. 
On the software side, Rockham 7 and beyond will integrate performance-aware scheduling, sparsity optimizations, and more aggressive use of compiler-level tuning to reduce total operations needed for training and inference. AMD says that this software contribution alone could push up to a 5x additional efficiency gain beyond the silicon. Now, internally, AMD is also shifting how it thinks about system design. With that Helios platform, AMD is rebalancing for power-aware rack architecture, suggesting that double-width racks and high-efficiency cooling will become standard. That also implies better power density utilization, getting more AI output per kilowatt per square foot. But the overall goal here for efficiency is even more ambitious. A hundred times better power efficiency overall by the end of the decade, when including both architectural gains and software level reductions in workload complexity. That would put AMD's rack scale AI output on a new trajectory, one that isn't bottlenecked by data center real estate or utility supply, unless we keep using it at the scale we do. The message here is clear. Performance leadership is important for AMD, but scalable efficiency is what will define long-term winners in the AI infrastructure. AMD is now treating that as a first order design constraint. Now to wrap up here, AMD's AI platform story in 2025 comes down to five key moves. A new GPU that doubles AI throughput and undercuts NVIDIA on tokens per dollar. A software stack called Rockham 7 that finally meets frameworks on day one. A full stack rail rack scale solution with CPUs, GPUs, and networking under one roof. A clear roadmap to MI400 and 500 and beyond with annual updates and scale up fabrics. And a long term efficiency goal aimed at making AI infrastructure economically sustainable. These aren't isolated announcements. Their coordinated steps meant to shift AMD from alternative to equal. Whether that strategy holds against NVIDIA's ecosystem lock-in remains to be seen, but AMD now has credible answers across every layer of the AI stack. Now, this video has been a high-level overview. In the next few episodes, we'll go deeper into the CDNA4 architecture itself, the economics behind AMD's rack power and density assumptions, and the broader question, is this a viable path to leadership or just a necessary second source? Let us know what you think in the comments, and if there's enough interest, we'll follow up with a video based entirely on your feedback. We'll also be bringing in expert voices where we can to test AMD's narrative against reality.